hey y'all hey so for those of you that um are confused on how to use the image that i have given you tonight because i know i have a few new cricut users so if you use um cameo silhouette i don't know how to help you i just really don't you could probably catch on by following along to what i'm doing here so I'm doing it just like I got it from myself. I copied it from the group instead of using the PNG. So I'm pulling this image in and I want to click on complex and then click continue. On this screen, I want to choose the wand. Click there. And click there that gets rid of the background continue make sure you choose print then cut hit upload choose it there and hit add to canvas on this screen what I'm going to do is go ahead and on height, I'm going to click 2.5 and hit enter. And that will, that's the size I would cut in. You can cut in 3 inch, 4 inch, however small or large you want to. That's on you. That's up to you. The size is up to you. 2.5 is uh, in between size. It's not too big and it's not too small. It's medium. It's like a standard size. So, then I would make... Um, I'm going to copy this so I'm going to control C that copies it and I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to control V to paste it you could also do that up here you just make sure it's selected and go up to edit and hit copy and then edit and then paste you could have did that there too so now that we have it pasted there we're going to take this image here and make it a basic cut and then we're just going to turn it off for now so we're going to turn back on the print and cut version and we're going to hit duplicate now if you want the front and the back of your earring to look the same then you can um do um four copies of these but if you're going to put glitter on the back or foil on the back or or a plain color on the back of the earring then you just need two of these images so let's say for the sake of this video that i want the front and the back to look the same then i'm just going to copy um to duplicate these um two more times that's two pieces two images for each earring so this is a front and back and this is a front and back you don't need to horizontal flip it you can leave it just like it is so I would just um, attach these and then from here I would hit make and then I would load my Cricut mat up with the um, I mean not the Cricut mat I will load my printer up with the Epson presentation paper or if you're gonna do um, printed printable glitter um, cardstock or whatever you're gonna use just load it up to be printed in your printer so I mean if you're gonna do um, vinyl then you could sublimate vinyl sublimation vinyl you could do that as well but for this tutorial I'm telling you how to use Cricut to in the Epson presentation paper so you will load your printer up your regular printer with Epson presentation paper and the good thing about that paper is you can print on the front and the back so if you mess up that front side just flip it over and bring it back through your printer so you run this through your printer you hit continue I'm going to go through the steps on my computer and uh, I like to add a bleed that way if it's if your print if your um, Cricut cuts off a little bit like it's off it's not on the line exactly adding the bleed will um, help 
cover that so you don't have any white edges. So let's see if it'll go to my next step because it's telling me I need to connect because I'm not connected right now. Okay, so it does. So in your next step, you want I would go select the printer that you're going to use and go to print preferences. I'm using an HP 2600 series. So then I would choose specialty paper. Choosing specialty paper gives you the best image you can get using the Epson paper. If you're not using plain paper, you should not be printing on plain paper. Unless you're doing um, sublimation, then you use the plain paper setting. But if you're using um, photo paper, um, printable sticker paper, any of that, use specialty paper. It The inkjet is... Do something magical. Trust me. Just use a specialty paper, not plain paper. So you do all of that. And then you hit print and let it print. Once that prints, then you'll load, load that paper onto your mat. And then you'll let your um, Cricut machine cut it. Once you have that cut, You'll turn those off and you'll turn this one on and you will make, uh, let's say if you're going to use 110 pound cardstock, then you can do, it's up to you how many, how many layers you want to do. But personally me, I do at least four layers per earring. So I would make eight of these. I would make eight of these and then attach and then I would hit make and then I would take that um, I, I like black I prefer black white is okay if you want to use white that's up to you but I like black so I would load my um, Cricut mat up with the black 110 pound and I like recollections and I get mine at um, Michael's um, I think it's Park and Lane at um, Joanne I think that's the brand I really don't care for Park and Lane it says 110 pound, but it feels a little thinner than the Recollections brand. So I use that brand, the Recollections brand, and I load my um, Cricut mat up with one sheet, and they come in with a size that I buy is eight and a half by eleven. So I load the Cricut mat up with that, run it through, and let it cut. Let let it cut those out, and I cut twice because one cut will um it won't cut all the way through sometimes so I use I use a regular blade or the deep clip cut blade but either either blade that I use I let it cut twice so after it cuts for some of the new ones after it cuts you do not push the arrow to unload the mat I just push the um, Cricut button the flashing Cricut button again to let it cut again you can set it up in your machine to where you let it you don't have to do that I rather do that because I don't go into settings I've never went into settings to mess with anything and mine cut mine cuts fine every time so once everything cuts then you don't need the computer anymore I'm just using using it to show you an example of what which what you would do next so you would take your Mod Podge and you would put some glue on one of these and then you would glue the next one on top take some Mod Podge it just repeat the steps until you glue all four of these together and then do the same thing for the next ones until you get all four glued together then once you did that let me just group them then once you did that then you would take and you would glue your images one to the back into the front and one to the top for both earrings of course when you once it's not on the um on the computer if in, in your hand you would flip one of these over to glue it to the back you won't glue the image to the back side like that like image side down you would glue image side out but 
once you get them glued like so then you will put my podge on the front of your images and let them dry then flip it over put my podge on that side as well and let it dry and then if you want to if you don't want to put any epoxy on it you don't have to you can take a clear spray paint and spray one side at a time let it dry then flip it over spray the other side and let it dry but make sure it is thoroughly dry before you flip it over because it may ruin your finish and if you if that's if you want to use spray paint if you don't want to use epoxy if you want to use epoxy soon as the my podge dries you can go ahead and add epoxy to your one side flip it over add epoxy to your other side after it after the first side dries flip it over add it to the other side now I do have a video where I I do a technique where I just put half of it together so so for these I might glue two two um just two and then two over here and then glue glue this to two um two and then I'll glue that to two so I can epoxy or spray paint both sides at the same time and then I will glue them together after everything finished but that's a little tricky so I just follow the first step until you get it and then if you want to venture out and try something try what I said then I have videos up for that as well so I hope this helps this is how you would use this I hope this helps then you move on to the same steps with the next earring and then put your findings in a jump a jump ring I use two jump rings per earring so I use a you know a regular size jump ring which was probably be about a five or six and then I will use like a three four a smaller one and then I will put the hook on so I hope this helps and just the second jump ring is just to give it movement so it won't be stuck if you put it on that one jump ring it will be turned weird and it, it would just be weird trust me you want a big jump ring and a tiny jump ring and the hook connects to the tiny jump ring. I hope this helps.